Hello and welcome to tutorial number 11 on multi-threading in Java from caveonprogramming.com. And this tutorial is going to be on deadlock and a couple of ways you can solve it, including using the trilock method of the reentrant lock class, which we looked at in the last tutorial. So, um, as in the last tutorial, I've got a little runner class set up here, and my main program is set up so that it runs the first thread method of runner and the second thread at the same time in different threads. And when the threads are finished, it calls the finish method of runner. So this is running in one thread at the same time this is running in another thread. And when the threads are finished, this is called. I've also got a account class here set up. And account just has a balance. And it has a method called deposit, which adds to the balance by the specified amount. It has a method called withdraw which um, subtracts the specified amount from the balance. There's a get balance method and there's a static transfer method which um, takes two account objects and withdraws the specified amount from the first and puts it in the second account. So pretty simple. I hope you're with me so far. And um, in my runner class, I'm going to create two accounts. So account um, ac1, I'll call it, equals new account. And let's say private account ac2 equals new account, like this. And in the finished, I'm going to say um, account1 balance, um, and that's going to be ac1.get ac1 balance. And I'm also going to have um, a account2.balance um, here. And I'm going to have a total balance here. So total balance will equal account one dot get balance plus account two dot get balance. And if I run that now, of course, I'm going to find that. Um, uh, well, if I run that now, once I've um, got rid of this uh, um, error, I'm going to find that. Um, uh, both um, accounts have their initial balance of 10,000 still and the total balance is going to be 20,000 dollars or euros or wh whatever you like. So now let's make this a bit more interesting and in the first thread I'm going to have a loop here which is going to loop 10,000 times and it's going to just make a bunch of random transfers from the first account to the second account. So I'm going to use the random class here to create um, random numbers. And I will say um, that uh, I'll do account.transfer and let's transfer from account one to account two a random amount um, of up to 100, like this. And uh, in, my, um, in my second thread, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to do it I'm going to transfer, make random transfers from account two to account one. And the point of this is to sort of, uh, well, of course, the real point is to illustrate a problem in multi-threading. But um, the idea is that this is some sort of sprawling banking system. And actually, there, there are not going to be two threads in reality, but a bunch of threads making you know random transfers between lots and lots of different random accounts. And um, Let's run this, and uh, the total balance should be 20,000, but it's not, because, of course, I've got multi-threading issues, as usual. And so, um, what I'll do is, it should be 20,000, because I'm only ever transferring. I'm not actually, if I withdraw from one account, I always transfer it into the next account. So, to fix that, I could use um, a nested synchronized block where where like the um, outer synchronized block, let's say, could acquire a lock for account one and the inner one could acquire a lock for account two. But um, partly because I don't like nesting things too much, I'm going to use the reentrant lock class instead. So let's say um, private lock, lock one, and this will be a lock for account one equals new reentrant lock, reentrant lock. And this is the class that we looked at in the last tutorial. And let's have a lock two, which is equal to new reentrant lock. And uh, what I'll do is before I do a transfer, I need the locks associated with both accounts. So I'll say lock one dot lock and lock two dot lock. And um, 
I mustn't forget to unlock and I'll better do that in a finally block just in case my account.transfer throws some kind of exception. So I'll say finally here lock1.unlock and lock2.unlock. Okay, uh, and now let's let's copy that after doing Control Shift F to format my code a bit, and I'll have that. I'll have the same thing in here, and uh, except that I'll go. I'll transfer from account two to account one. Now, if I run that, it's going to work and it'll solve my uh, multi-threading issues. So now I'm not losing money all over the place which is good. But you can imagine that if this is some um, huge system um, and you have a lock associated with each account, not that you would, but imagine um, if you did. In fact, you might, um, come to think of it. Uh, then um, you probably won't know which, you won't know which account you're going to transfer from an account and which account you will transfer to in advance. You just know that you're going to be given two accounts and told transfer money from one account to the other account. So you're going to get the lock associated with one account um, and then the lock associated with, it, with the other account. And the point of that is uh, that what I mean to say is that you might end up locking um, first. If you're transferring from account two to account one, it makes sense that you might end up locking first account the lock for account two and then the lock um, associated, associated with account one like this. So um, basically we're, we're doing our locks in different orders and if I run that sooner or later you'll have um, what we call deadlock and the reason for this is so the program is just waiting and it's not doing anything it's just frozen. The reason this has occurred is that you might even guess that the, um, the first thread has um, at some point or other acquired lock 1 and the second thread has acquired lock 2 and then the first thread has tried to acquire lock 2 but it can't because this has got lock 2 and this is trying to acquire lock 1 but it can't because this has got lock 1 so neither of the threads can proceed because um, each of the threads needs a lock that the other thread has got but both threads has already got one lock um, and it's not going to give it up um, because it won't give up um, the thread that the lock that it has got until it can get the other lock and then, then later on it will do the unlocks so both threads have got one lock and neither can get the other lock and this is deadlock and deadlock can occur if you lock your locks in different orders and it can occur not only with re-entrant lock but also with nested synchronized blocks and when I say nested synchronized blocks of course it's, prob it's possible that you'll have one synchronized block in one method and that will call another method which in it in the second method you have another synchronized block so they're not necessarily going to be obviously nested and there are two solutions to this that I know of and one of them of course is just to always lock your locks in the same order and that will ensure that you don't get deadlock. Um, another possibility is, well let's imagine here that um, I want some kind of method that can acquire the locks in any order um, and it will never cause deadlock. So imagine that if you will. Let's try to code such a method. So I'll say public well, let's make it private. Private void acquire locks. And you can pass the locks that you want to acquire locks. So I'll say lock first lock and lock second lock. And the job of acquire locks is to acquire the first lock and the second lock um, in such a way that, that deadlock can't be caused. So I'll say here, I'll replace my previous code with acquire locks, um, lock one, lock two and I'll have the same again in the um, second thread here except that I'm going to try to lock lock 2 and lock 1 and uh, the way to do this is you can use something called try lock uh, which is a method of re-entrant lock that returns immediately and it returns true if it's got the lock and false if it hasn't and um, we're going to do that in a loop because I want this acquire locks to really uh, make sure it does acquire the locks and I don't want it to return in this case until it does acquire them and in reality of course you might want to think about timeouts and that sort of thing but here let's have a while true and uh, here I'll try to acquire the locks 
and um, if I can't acquire the locks, locks not acquired, then I'm just going to have a thread, I'm just going to sleep for long enough that um, one of my threads might unlock the, um, the locks that it's got um, to give me a chance of acquiring them on the next kind of iteration around this loop. So to acquire the locks, or to, to attempt to acquire the locks, um, I'll have a try block here, and in this try block, well, let's have a couple of booleans. So I'll say boolean got lock, maybe got first lock, and this um, will be set to true if I can get the first lock, and we'll have get second lock equals false too. And in the try thing here, we'll say um, got first lock equals first lock dot try lock like this and you can see that try lock also has um, a version that um, has a timeout which you might want to use in a real situation but I'm not going to use that here I'm just going to use try lock and we'll say second um, hang on got second lock here equals second lock dot try lock so second lock dot try lock so um, try lock will return immediately, and it will it will only return true if it's got the locks. Otherwise, it, it'll be false. If it return if it returns false, I need to unlock the locks, of course, and go around the loop again. So in this finally block here, which will execute even if one of these throws an exception, um, I will say, um, well, if if I've got my locks, if got first lock and got second lock, then we've done what we wanted to do. So I can just return from the function and it works. Um, if if I'm down here, I haven't got the locks or I haven't got at least one of the locks. So I want to say, but I want to make sure that I unlock whatever lock, whatever locks I have got. So if I say here, if I've got the first lock, then here I better unlock it. Um, first lock dot unlock to give other threads a chance to um, acquire it. And here, if I've got second lock, um, and remember this bit's only happening if I haven't got both the locks, then I'll do second lock dot unlock. And um, yeah, that should be got second lock. Okay, so um, uh, basically I will try to get the locks in a try thing and um, I'll have a finally which will always execute and I'll check here and finally if I've got both locks I'll return from the method because it's now acquired the locks and if I haven't got both the locks then I need to check each one and unlock it if it's locked um, because I want to give other threads a chance to um, to get it, to get those locks. And uh, if I don't get the locks and I don't return, then I'm just going to sleep for a bit and I'll try again in another iteration of the loop. So now acquire, now acquire locks, we'll always acquire the locks safely and we won't get deadlock. Okay, so um, quite a lot for this tutorial. This code is on caveofprogramming.com as always. And um, do join me for the next tutorial when um, I'm not sure what we'll look at yet, but possibly semaphores or possibly something else because there's still quite a lot on multithreading to cover. Although we've covered a lot and and we've covered a lot to we've covered enough to get you through most situations that you'll encounter um, in multithreading, I should think. Okay, so join me again for next time and until then, happy coding.